Folks, my friends, I want to welcome you to my cooking show tonight. Thanks for tuning in to the Overstay Road Grill. My name is Marcos. In the U.S., everybody calls me Mark. Folks, tonight I've got a special, special, extra special episode for you. Because I came up with a new dish today while I was walking around the market. I'm coming to you live. Well, we're not live. It's not a live stream. But I'm coming to you from Southeast Asia. I was over at the market and the vegetables look so damn wonderful tonight. I couldn't just pick two or three. You know, and they say, hey, most dishes have a few ingredients. But tonight I'm blowing that theory out of the water because... All of the, these vegetables over there look so good. You know, every time I thought I was done shopping, I felt sorry for the broccoli. I felt sorry for the, the green onions. And folks, I had to pick them up. I had to pick them up and, you know, <clears throat> I ended up with a lot of ingredients. But what I'm going to call this dish tonight, what I'm going to teach you and introduce you to, I'm calling this Blackjack chicken blackjack chicken 21 you're a winner why is it called blackjack chicken because there are 21 ingredients to make this little masterpiece i've never done it before so i'm gonna i'm gonna give you an honest review when we come up with the final product but i'm telling you right now blackjack chicken is going to it's going to take the culinary world by storm all right 21 ingredients. Let me talk about my wardrobe. And look, I don't own a whole lot of clothes, but when I went up and looked in my closet and said, what am I going to wear for this video? I said, well, I got a black shirt. That fits the blackjack chicken, right? But then I looked and I said, you know what? This is the perfect shirt because it fits the blackjack chicken. And because this dish right here is going to be worth its weight in gold. See that gold right there? Black and gold. Perfect. All right, come on over here. I'm going to show you what the ingredients are. All right, folks. So I lost my camera lady. She got some stuff going on over there. So all right, I'm, I'm going back to being a one man crew right here. All right. Okay, so welcome to my walk right here. This, uh, this walk seen its better days, but I will be upgrading my walk in the near future. All right, so let's go. We got broccoli, we got lemon, we got lime. Now this is for the sauce right here, folks. And this, I created this great dish in a past video with, with some lemon, but today I said let's go with lemon and lime. And you got a, you got a total mixing pot right here. We got the red hot chili peppers, Little, a little bit of tomato, red bell pepper, the green pepper. And let me try to show you without dropping the camera here. This is the green pepper. Okay, it looks like a jalapeno, but it's not. And I'm not even sure the exact name for that. I live in Southeast Asia, Thailand most of the time. I can get all kind of peppers except for jalapenos. I got to get those imported. These red hot peppers right here, that's the that's the folks right there that I've chopped up. I, and now if it was if this dish was just for me, I would obviously have a lot more of this. I'm gonna try to let my Filipina try it out. But if you're cooking this for your wife, uh, you might want to take out the, uh, the the spice. Okay, this is a little bit of spice. This is a little bit more, but I'm going with the spice, folks. Moving right along. I got the onions, garlic, a little cilantro, cilantro, chopped up green onions, and the basil. Obviously, some chicken, which is marinating. I'm going to show you what it's marinating in. A little bit of brown sugar, a little bit of butter. Okay, we're going to hit it with a little uh, salt and pepper. And then this is going to be key right here. This, this coconut milk is going to be key to the overall flavor. And I've got about a half a cup. Now when I say cup, it's not the measuring cup. It's a half a goddamn Dolemon coffee cup 
full of this coconut milk that's going in the, in the in the mix here. So this is one item. Don't count those as two. Uh, I'm in Thailand, so this is a sauce I like to go with. But if you're in the U.S., just uh, use soy sauce. Use some Kiko Man sauce. If you have access to oyster sauce, you got to hit it with that. So these two items right here is what my chicken has sort of been marinating in. And then for the last, number 21, which is an ingredient, but it's really more of a tool, but I, I counted it, 21. You gotta have some oil. So th this is kind of an overview right here. All the ingredients that are gonna come together in a culinary masterpiece in my wok here, in my kitchen, on this episode of Overstate Grill. Okay, now listen, I, I talk about this walk in, in my past episodes. This walk has seen its better days. Um, it's missing two legs, and the temperature regulator has two functions. Uh, scalding hot and sometimes hot. It's, it's messed up. Uh, but I do recommend if you're going to buy a walk, buy the most, the, not the most expensive, but the best quality wok you can buy, all right? Because I can't regulate temperature with this guy. He's just too far gone. But I do recommend that you use a wood spatula just like this guy. All right, folks, let's get this party started. I'm back, like I said, I'm back to being a one-man camera crew. My wife has some other things she had to tend to real quick. So on this little walk right here, my friends, um, like I said, I, it's not a real good on temperature control. Let's kick it on, see what she's gonna do. Me and my little magical wooden spatula here. Folks, we fixing to throw down. And I hope you can hear me. I hope the audio is okay. I'm not facing the camera. But this old camcorder that I got right here, it does a real good job picking up audio um, in the room. The iPhone does not. You gotta be facing that thing or you've got to have the uh, earpiece in. So that's why I'm, I'm kinda changing it up and I'm going with this older camera here. My RX100 Sony. Folks, I you know, I'm to the point right now the Sony RX100 is a great still camera. It is not a video camera. We can talk about that later. All right, folks, the chicken's been marinating in soy sauce and oyster sauce. Boom, panette, let's drop it in there and let's kick it off. Let's get this party going. And you'll see in every video I do, I always start out with my meat because I don't want medium rare meat. I want this meat well done. So I'll start out with the meat. And once I get that to a point where I know the finished product is not gonna have any, any medium rare meat, then I, I'm going to the next step. So just get that going right there. Hope you can see that okay. I got the uh, camcorder on the tripod. No camera person for me today. For the Black Jack Chicken episode, it's the luckiest chicken. If you eat this chicken before you go to Vegas at the Black Jack tables, oh my God, you're gonna tear them up. That's the way it is. All right. Let's not be pussyfooting around. That's the cilantro. We got the garlic, we got the onions. Let's hit it. Boom, in we go. No rhyme or reason to this. All right, I gotta hit a little bit more oil because I'm already fucking up my wok. I'm not a big expert. But I'm learning as I go, every night, I'm learning from my mistakes, and I already made a mistake. I didn't have enough oil up in there, added too much stuff. Alright, jump right on in. Let's go with the basil and the green onion chopped up right there. Let's keep going. Let's go, just keep hitting. Let's stir it up here. You can never put too much basil in a dish because that basil cooks down 
that shit cooks down so, so much that you don't even see the basil. So I don't think you can put too much. That's just the way it is. Let me slow this cooking down with a little bit more soy sauce so I don't stop burning it. And then we're going to hit it with a little bit of oyster sauce. All right, now we slow it down. So I got that, I got that chicken, you know, on the way to completion. That, that's what I want. I want a lot of heat on that chicken to get that thing done first. Okay, now we can uh, add a little bit of sauces. Slow it down just a little bit because by the time we get done, there's no doubt the chicken is going to be complete. Hot peppers, tomatoes, bell peppers, and the green pepper I showed you earlier. Boom. Right up in there. All right, so we're doing pretty good here. All this is gonna cook down. Don't think that this is gonna end up being soup because it's not. Go with the broccoli. Now listen, when you go with broccoli, you can never go with too much broccoli, all right? I mean, who the hell doesn't love broccoli? Shit. All right, so we got that broccoli going, folks. We are off to a good start. What I like to do is hit this with a little sea salt. Not too much. Get it with a little black pepper. And I'm sorry if I'm out of frame here. I'm doing the best I can. So a little sea salt, a little sea salt, a little black pepper. All right, and just let this continue to cook. We're doing good. All right, now come over here to the sauce. This is the coconut, coconut milk right here. I got about a half Dolimon coffee cup full of the, the uh, coconut sauce. I've obviously got a couple uh, teaspoons of butter, maybe two or three teaspoons of brown sugar, and I've got the lemon and the lime. All that's about to go right on top of this mix. Okay, I want to let this boil off just a little bit, just to shed some of the uh, the water, the liquid. I'm not making soup. I'm making a dish with the most delicious sauce you could ever hope to come up with. And I'm going to let this cook down just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just put the dough in my own. See, see if you can see me over here. And I'm going I'm to take the, uh, the coconut, coconut milk. I'm going to take the lemons and the limes and I'm just going to squeeze it in there. Let's just get it going. Just squeeze it in there. And I am making a mess, but I've been drinking. Put the limes in there. I could get a couple seeds, but hell, no, I don't think nobody died over some seeds. Maybe they have, I don't know. Okay, keep this stirring. Keep this going right here. Don't get lazy. Okay, and again, we're putting the lemon and the lime in with the coconut milk. Shit, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to filter out those uh, those seeds, folks, because there's no sense in that. I should have I should have a little filter on there, be a little more prepared. But basically, I'm putting lemon and limes into coconut milk. All right, all right. So it's time. It's time, folks. It is time to hit this. I hope you can see this right here because again, my, my camera angle is not the greatest. But we're hitting this with the coconut milk and I'm gonna try to strain out the seeds that I got in here. And it'll slow down the cooking. You know, it's obviously gonna take the temperature down. But we just added the coconut milk. This is when the magic happens. There is something magical about coconut milk and the way it starts making your dish cook. I don't know what it is, but it will take this sauce and start thickening this thing up to where it's not soup. It's, there's no longer soup here, folks. This is not soup. This is a delicious sauce that even if you didn't eat anything here, any of the vegetables or the meat, you can put that sauce over loaf bread and just eat it like that. That's how delicious it is. All right. 
Look at that. The smell coming off of this is so... I mean, it, it, you could put this in a potpourri dish and use this as a uh, air freshener for your house. I mean, if you're trying to sell your house, just cook some of this before people come over. They buy in that house. All right, the brown sugar. It's about three tablespoons of brown sugar. Now listen, if you're trying to cook for American kids that are used to eating pizza and all this kind of junk food, they might not eat just a vegetable and meat dish, but if you put in a little bit of brown sugar, folks, I'll, I'll bet you a dollar they're going to eat it. And that's the way it is. The last thing, uh, here in Southeast Asia, people don't eat a lot of dairy products, but I'm kicking the butter in there. I'm kicking the butter in there. I don't eat a lot of butter these days. I don't eat any, really any cheese anymore. Dairy products are just not part of my diet over here. But with this dish, I felt like the butter would just come together with that lemon. And it was proven, oh shit, I got, you know, I just put that all over the front of me. It was proven in the, uh, the tropical broccoli pork video. I mean, that is some of the best food I've ever tasted in my life. And this right here is, is sort of a cousin to the tropical broccoli pork. But the blackjack chicken with 21 ingredients, you know, next time I go to Vegas, I'm, I'm eating this dish every night. Because my luck is going to come together at the blackjack table. Blackjack chicken. 21 ingredients. You can't get any more lucky than that, right? Alright, so let that simmer down. I'm going to try to turn the heat down, but this, this regulator don't work worth the crap. I'm going to take the liberty to uh, drink a little bit of beer. And I'm going to tell you right now, this might look like soup. I mean, it kind of looks like a gankily guy, which is like a coconut soup. But in my experience, this will cook down. It'll cook down and, and thicken into a great little sauce. So I'm just going to keep cooking it a little bit. I tried to turn the heat down, and it went down. But what happens is... This thing has like on and off. So I might let it slow down, kick it back up a little. Folks, if you're gonna buy a wok or any type of electrical kitchen appliance, I recommend you buy the best quality that you can. This thing here is just a pain in the ass, but when I was in the Philippines, I bought a little $20 electric grill the thing had a short in it and almost killed me. I almost died trying to barbecue some pork chops on the balcony of my hotel because it's some, some trash that's so cheap from China that it's, it's just a death trap. Don't buy cheap shit. Buy quality, quality gear. It's going to last. And you have a much better experience than whatever that gear is supposed to do. So this walk is, I mean, this walk has been a trooper. It's seen, it's seen its better days. It's seen a lot of action. But it's time for, it's time for me to upgrade the walk because this is my primary cooking utensil. And over here behind me, you can't see it, but I got a rice cooker. And pretty much, if you got a walk and a rice cooker, you can cook anything. You don't need to be guys. Oh, shit. You don't need a big ass oven. You need a wok and a rice cooker. And you can definitely throw it down. So for all my men watching this, I remind you in every video. You know, learn some cooking skills from either my videos, YouTube, 
or go to your mama's house and learn some cooking skills. You don't need no $500 cooking class. You don't need that. Go to your mother's house, your grandmother's house. They'll teach you some cooking skills. And a couple times a week, two, three times a week at least, get in there and cook for your wife, your girlfriend, your significant other, your boyfriend or your husband, whoever that might be. And they're really going to appreciate that, okay? Going out to eat, especially in the West, costs a lot of money. Between $50 and $100, a lot of places. Folks, even in the West, you're going to have more fun and have a more memorable experience if you get in the kitchen and cook for your wife or with your wife, significant other, then if you go out to dinner, you more adventure to this right here. And if you totally screw this up, if you just totally destroy what I have taught you how to do, okay, you can you can back off and either make some ramen noodles or you could order a pizza. That's that's still I mean, you're looking at what 20 bucks, 25 bucks, 30. You're still saving 50, 60 dollars by not going out. He's still going to have a great afternoon, a great evening. Oh, yeah. Folks, this is going to be some type of wonderful. Now, this is going to be a little, I'll be honest with you, this is going to be a little bit more soupy than what I had imagined. It's almost like a gankily guy. It's almost going to be like a soup. But I'm going to call it done. Just a cooking tip, if you've got a, a cheap electrical appliance, cheap kitchen appliance, cooking appliance, whatever, just because you turn that off, don't trust that it's off. you got to unplug the damn thing. So I've got it unplugged, and folks, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it sit here. And with this coconut milk and that brown sugar, it's going to thicken up. It's going to thicken up. I hit it pretty pretty hard with the coconut milk. It might turn out to be a little bit more soupy. That's okay. But I really think it's going to thicken up to the point that you would want to take this sauce, put it on a biscuit or a piece of loaf bread, and just go to town on it. All right, folks. Thank you for joining me on my, my cooking video. And like I said, cooking in a wok. You're going to have good days and bad days, and then, you know, every night you're going to learn something new. You're going to get better and better. But I promise you this right now, you know, if I bring some ladies over here to my crib, they, they're going to love me getting in here and cooking this. They're going to love it. I promise you. So, hey, folks, if you're not a subscriber, find that damn subscribe button. Go ahead and click on that. You're going to get videos like this on a, I can't say every night, sometimes I get too drunk and just don't do anything, but you're going to get videos like this on a frequent basis. I'm going to show you how to cook Thai food, Filipino food, uh, cook in the wok and the rice cooker, just show you stuff that I've come up with, but I'm going to tell you, if you have a wok and you got a little rice cooker like this, which right now I cook rice in there but you can you can pretty much make any meal you want to fairly healthy fairly cheap and it's a fun it's a fun time doing it if you're cooking with your spouse all right folks I'm gonna stop the video right now I'm gonna let this thicken up I'm gonna plate it and then I'm gonna show you what it, what it looks like and I'm gonna be honest with you I'll tell you how it tastes and hey thanks for joining me Alright my friends, tonight I'll be dining alone because uh, my wife has some other things to do but I didn't want to get this video in for you. So uh, here in Southeast Asia, you know, a lot of places around the world help. Actually a lot of places outside the West, you know we sit on the floor, yeah I got a nice table in there, I got a table out, out back, whatever. But. Uh, 
a lot of times we just sit on the floor so welcome to my table gotta get me a drink going on but I want you to check out the final product right here it's still thickening up it's uh, just on a little bit soupy side which is fine when you end up putting it over you know over a bed of rice so when you put it on rice uh, soup is fine it's no problem I personally like to, like to keep my sauce a little bit thick and this is this is thickening up nicely. I got no complaints. But this this damn blackjack chicken, folks, the luckiest chicken in the world. I am I am very pleased with how the the presentation has turned out. Now, obviously, I got to taste it. You know, I got to get a little taste test going on here. I'm gonna let you know yes or no. Is it delicious? Is it not? Because not everything I do, and not everything I cook is a winner. You can't win them all, you know? But I'm thinking this right here is going to be an absolute winner. If you're going to Vegas, if you're going to the racetrack, betting on them ponies, betting on them dogs, you, get you, a, you cook you some blackjack chicken, 21 ingredients, Folks, you love you. You got all the luck in the world. If you lose, it's because you know it just wasn't meant to be. Also, I've got a, a fresh vegetable plate here, folks, and I like to keep the salt and the pepper because I like to uh, hit my fresh vegetables with a little salt and pepper. Obviously, I got me a drink. Mm. Let's take a bite of this. I know I'm a little bit far away, but you know my camera lady bailed out on me. She had something else to do. Let me take a bite of this right here. Watch my facial expression, and it will tell you if this is delicious or not. All right, here we go. Mmm. 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 Just give me a second. I gotta get one more bite. I'm gonna tell you right now. There's only good one word to describe a blackjack chicken. 21 ingredients, I'm going to describe it in one word. And it's got a little bite, it's got a little fire in the back of my throat, and that's what I want. One word to describe this chicken, and it's called, it's absolutely delicious. All right, hey, I want to thank you guys for joining me. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. You're going to get videos like this as frequently as I can pump them out. And folks, I love to cook. Wherever you're at in the world, have a great morning, great evening, great night. And thanks for joining me. I'll see you on the next adventure or the next cooking show. And uh, have a good night, my friends.